Hi, welcome to Project Geospatial. I'm Adam Simmons, and I'm here with uh, Kevin Pomfret, who is a attorney uh, working. How would you describe yourself? Geospatial law, correct, Kevin? Well, I'm a, I'm a corporate lawyer that I, but I fo focus on the uh, legal and policy issues around geospatial information. Awesome. And we wanted to start and focus this episode around uh, geospatial law or for specifically location privacy issues. And uh, you have quite a bit to talk about regarding this, right? I mean, there's just, uh, you know, tell me about your experience and what goes on in the industry related to uh, this topic. So thanks. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot going on right now. Uh, I'm a former satellite imagery analyst back uh, working, used to work at NPIC, which is a predecessor to NGA, and have been interested in geospatial technologies ever since. And so as we see the evolution of privacy and data protection laws, not just here in the United States, but around the globe, because of the power of location information, uh, people are, are starting to add that into the into the mix of, of the types of data that needs to be protected and, and regulated. And so within the past year or so, uh, we're seeing developments to try to protect um, you know, how geolo geospatial information in all its form is being collected, used, and shared. Can you give us a good example of that, just kind of getting into things? Sure. So um, many of you, the people watching this are probably familiar with the General Data Protection Regulation known as GDPR which was um, introduced in Europe last year. Um, that replaced something called a direct, a GD, uh, general data protection directive, um, but the regulation for the first time listed location information not really defined as information, information that need to be protected. And similarly, the California Consumer Privacy Act, which passed uh, last year and goes into effect in uh, 2020, also includes location information as information about an individual that, that needs to be protected. So those are the sort of developments we're seeing in addition to some court cases and also among regulators in the United States, such as the Federal Trade Regulation, Federal Trade Commission. So what, what, do, what are some of the principles of privacy law such as this that companies need to be aware of? You know, and, uh, and, and I guess part of that as a follow on to your answer, um, how important is it for companies to think about understanding these things? Because how, how, do you feel like a lot of companies are, are, are integrating these strategies or these principles within their current uh, business plans right now? I think a lot of companies are familiar with the need to protect personal information because there are a lot of developments uh, in the United States and internationally. But I don't think geospatial companies are necessarily aware of the effort to collect our uh, effort to include location information into the mix and that's going to be the real challenge because from a legal standpoint trying to define location information and to deal with some of the unique characteristics that separate i believe location information from other types of information that are being protected is going to raise some real issues and, and frankly lawyers lawmakers policymakers judges no one really understands these issues or location as well as they need to, to be making these rules and, and regulations. So privacy is generally based on some principles that were developed back in the 1970s or so called the Fair Information Practice Principles. And they deal with notice, transparency, consent, access, security, some of the things that we see in a number of privacy laws around the, around the world. Um, and and those, those constructs continue today but my concern is that trying to make fit location into that is going to be really challenging and could have a negative impact for some some segments of the geospatial community at least awesome so the uh so you sorry i'm trying to get a handle sure. interpret everything you just said there and uh there's a lot to take in um so from a from a from a location standpoint, what are some of these aspects of privacy that, uh, for example, let's let's talk about maybe I should just bring up a, a company of of question, and I've been kind of curious about how uh, the repercussions of of it could be. For example, uh, Hawkeye 360 uh, is a, is a good one, or or even uh, Cleos. So companies like them are coming out with uh, 
commercial SIGINT based data that is more geospatial in origin, right? So this is basically monitoring RF signals from space. Uh, and typically that use case has been more focused around government customers, but uh, now they're trying to apply such technology for commercial as well. And obviously monitoring RF signals has a lot of location privacy issues attached to it. So I know I'm taking this in a slightly different direction, but I'm trying to apply an example that uh, of, of an industry or a company that we're currently dealing with in, in the last couple of years that has brought a lot of questions to mind. So I, I, I don't want to talk about particular companies okay, or okay. particular um, or per even particular technologies per se because I think I think each of them raise their own challenge. I, I think the general question that you ask is is a good one, which is there are all these new technologies and applications that are developing around location information, and each of these companies and organizations that use them need to be more mindful or need to be mindful of that as they develop products and services, both for the current regulatory environment in addition to where the regulatory environment is likely to go. And part of that, as you suggest, may, may depend upon who the customer is and how the customer is going to use it because laws and policies are in this field are often tied to use and who has access to it. So that's certainly part of it. And that cuts both ways. So for instance, there are additional requirements on government agencies, cybersecurity requirements, Privacy Act that applies to government customers that don't currently apply to commercial customers, but then there are different aspects that commercial companies need to worry or you need to worry about with respect with respect to commercial use that you may not need to worry about for uh, government customer use. So I think your I think your general premise is a, is a good one, and we are seeing just a host of new technologies that are coming out that are figuring out ways to collect and use location information. And my concern is that they're going to be caught up in this um, quick, fairly quickly from a legal standpoint um, change in the landscape around regulating, regulating uh, data in general, but certainly location information. Okay. So um, with that said, who's responsible for enforcing these laws uh, and these, in these, we'll call it, you know, these guidelines set forth, you know, through the various industries? So right now in the United States, there's a there, there's not a federal level um, agency that's responsible for data protection and, and privacy of, of any type. There's a the, the Federal Trade Commission probably has the broadest authority under um, its its uh, enabling legislation, Section Five of its enabling legislation. But even that authority is not as broad as, as certainly in other in other countries to, that they give their their uh, government agencies regulatory authorities. And that's one of the challenges that federal legislation is trying to address. To, to, is the power of the Federal Trade Commission strengthened? Having said that, there are a number of sector-specific laws around HIPAA, for instance, and health information, or Graham Leach Bliley around uh, financial institutions. There's data collect, there's a Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, which is actually um, within the purview of uh, the Federal Trade Commission. So there are industries, there are specific domains where various industries various entities, government agencies are responsible for uh, regulating, but there's no sort of overarching level at the federal level, it, no, arching, no overarching agency at the federal level that has a broad set of authorities. Um, Understood. Of, would would the, the FCC, as it applies to the internet data laws, also be a kind of a contender within that mix? Uh, yeah, the, the FCC has certain authorities and requirements associated with that as well. So um, in this sphere, it's very much right now, very much in terms of how how, what industry is using it and how they're collecting it and who their regulatory authority is. Now, one of the challenges is if they each identify location information differently and you're in a space that uses data from a variety of them, of those agencies or data types, now you have to required to make sure you comply with all the different regulations, which could be very onerous. Uh, have you seen a situation where any one of those would be conflicting with each other or... From from an agency standpoint, just curious there. Um, no, I haven't. I haven't. I, I can't off the top of my head see where there's. I can't come up with anything that is conflicting. Um, certainly, there are some ambiguities associated with whether what's covered or, or not covered. Um, but I haven't seen anything yet that I would seem conflicting now. This is a little bit of a stretch, but there was a recent case in the Supreme Court that um, 
we had to deal with a collection of location information by law enforcement using a tracking device. And historically, that was considered to be okay as long as you were monitoring someone's movements when they were in public spaces. Um, but the Supreme Court came out and overruled that because they said that, um, effectively overruled it, um, because they said the actual installation of a tracking device on the vehicle was a trespass. And so without getting a warrant to collect that information, you violated the suspect's Fourth Amendment rights. So there is, there's, that is a, I won't say it's a conflict, but it's certainly tension between the existing law and, and old law and the existing law. And I expect we're gonna see more of those um, before we start seeing conflicting type laws. Well, and that brings up an interesting uh, a, a transition here in terms of understanding the state of privacy law with not just the uh, the states, but also the federal government as a whole and internationally. Can you talk about some of those differences? Yeah, so um, internationally, as I mentioned, the GDPR came is gonna come into effect in May of 2019. And we are still working through that. And by working through that, I mean that the European governments and the data protection authorities are still trying to figure out how to apply that to the ever uh, quickening, changing uh, technology um, technology environment, um, in addition to figuring out how to in interpret laws and apply them to existing technology. So there's that, that is going on. Once you have a law like that, it's not unusual to find other countries that try to adopt something similar. And so we've seen other countries adopt um, similar type GDPR-like legislation within their own borders. So that's, that's taking place. In the US, as I mentioned, the California Consumer Privacy Act was passed. It, it has been referred to as GDPR light. Um, it's, it's not as robust in some areas and some other way areas is actually probably considered more robust, but that's that's going on. And other states are looking at copying that. Um, and so there's that effort at the state level. At the federal level, there's been growing push to, by both industry and government and the privacy community to have federal uh, legislation, but there's some real challenges to that. And, and one is, uh, what do you do? Does it preempt state law? Do you have federal, does, do the state's laws still uh, apply? Um, is there a private right of action so that an individual can sue if a law is violated? Um, what authority, what government agency is a fall under? How do you define personal information from the geospatial community? That will probably depend upon whether location information is included and how that's defined. So there's there's a lot in flux and it's continuing to develop, but it's it's moving fairly quickly, particularly at the state level and internationally. So in terms of how quickly this is moving over the last well couple of years and moving forward over the next couple, uh, you know, what do you potentially see as the impact on the community, the geospatial community as a whole? Uh, so my concerns are, are, are a couple. Um, one is that uh, you will see um, it, it, uh, location information being included in existing laws and require and regulations concerning, for instance, data breaches. Right now, most data breach laws, and there are all 50 states have them, don't include location information. But if location information is currently, or, or become subject to those, then geospatial companies are gonna have to see how it's defined and what happens if there's a data breach that includes that. And the data breach is not just a, a third party hacking in, but it's someone losing a computer or someone, um, an employee taking information. So those requirements would kick in if, if location information was to be subject to considered to be personal information. Um, another would be uh, sort of a, a, hip, a patchwork of laws that 49 or 50 different states have different definitions of location and they're interpreted differently by courts. Some would say for it may, might exclude satellite imagery, others might exclude um, another type of Im imagery. Um, one of the challenges that I see is that there are several states that are collecting, that are identifying imagery collected from drones as being um, potentially violating the individual platform. But as uh, folks in this community know, a drone is simply um, a, a platform. And if you extend that to satellites or manned aircraft and you look at the sensors as and the data as the real issue, then you start getting into concerns around, you know, how do you use drone data? How do you use satellite data? Um, so there's a there's there's that part of it, and then there's the probably the worst case would be a HIPAA-like environment where it's so regulated because of the privacy concerns that 
that it becomes really difficult to collect and share the information, much like it is if you if you deal in, in them with your doctors and, and you have to get a consent for everything that they do with it. Uh, you have to give your consent for everything they do with it. Um, they have difficulty sharing it because of the law. If you, that gets to be the case, then I think customers will, will challenge. Um, it will be difficult for customers to collect and, or to use the information that's collected in ways that this industry you know, believes is very valuable. And I believe is valuable as well. Oh, absolutely. That would be, that would be, a, uh, that would be a huge disruptor considering the amount of information you can just gather from a single image, for example. So, uh, wow, that would, yeah, it's definitely something incredible to think about. So how soon do you think we could start seeing some of these changes or repercussions? I mean, you mentioned that kind of a couple of years, but anything coming down the pipeline in the short term that you're aware of that uh, people should be aware of? So there's a, um, there's a, there's a, there's a bill that was introduced, well, actually it wasn't a bill, but it was a proposed legislation that was introduced in California just last week that would define um, uh, sensitive personal information as anything collected within a half mile radius. And it's, it's still very far from becoming law, but it is a definition now that's out there in a state that is very well, is followed very closely from a privacy standpoint. And so I worry that that's going to be a term or a definition that's going to be used and apply to other state statutes or federal legislation or internationally. And the the this, the concern that, that I would suggest that the geospatial community should have is that depending on the sensor that you use and how it's used and, and how you're going to use the data, it could, it could be very broadly applied. And there's some pretty strict uh, requirements in terms of how you can collect that data and how you can use it and what rights does an individual have to stop you from using it. So that's something that's that's out there. It just came out last week. Okay. And it's something that I think people should follow. Absolutely. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to uh, make anybody else aware of in regards to location privacy? No, I, no, that's, that's it. I, I appreciate the opportunity. I, I think it's an important issue for this for this community, both industry and government. And so um, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. Well, thank you. This is uh, Kevin Pomfrey. Uh, sorry, Kevin Pomfret. <laughs> I did it anyway. Um, my name is Adam Simmons, and this has been an episode on Project Geospatial. Thank you very much.